Well, that's basically how I'd approach this guy. What else do we want to do to him? We want to do. You want to shoe the other two feet up? Yeah, I put a. I would put a bar shoe on the, the upright foot. You notice those horses that, are, like you're talking about, quite often it's, the other foot's almost clubby. Yeah, that's all. Okay, and a lot of time they'll end up in the dish in the toe. What I feel like what's happening on the, uh, on the flat, but no, but on the upright, really, really upright foot, they, they'll get like a. Um, my feeling is with those is that they end up with, a, like I call it, a mechanical uh, problem. What happens when they land, because they don't have enough support the heels, the heels sink in, because th those legs have got a, a tight suspensory apparatus, you know. I feel like what happens is, because that's tight in the tendons, the heels sink in, and the tendons and the suspensory apparatus, it's like almost causing a mechanical laminitis in the foot, or rotation in the foot. And if you, if you put a bar shoe on, you stop the, high, the seal, heel sinking in, and then you find the feet improve. Really? Yeah. So put a bar shoe on the, on the club here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, put a heart bar on the one and a, a bar shoe on the other one, so on the club. Like here wide and outside. Yeah. So because I, that's how I feel. They, ha they land, they sink in the heels. When the heels are sinking, they've got a tight suspensory. Well, well they're, doing, they're doing that inside the foot. That's how I tend to tr trim my frogs. See how I go up the top? And see, there it tells me, see that flare, frog flare down in here? There's a frog flare right there. I basically just straighten that up. And that's what. No, yeah. Yeah, I am taking much off the side there. There's a little frog flare there on the other side, so I take that out. And I just take the sharp edge off. You know, it's very easy just to, to V it out. I mean, I can do that too. I think we've got a bit of bruising in the heel right there. Heels are collapsing. And you notice there's often bruising in these guys where they've been collapsed heels? Because they stand behind vertical. And if you stand behind vertical, where's your weight going? No, into a toe. If you stand like this, your toe, the weight's on your toe, and you find a lot of these horses will get a lot of bruising around their toe because they stood behind vertical, so their toe's weight bearing. I, I don't like to take the bars below the sole. I do like to trim the bars, okay? I don't want them look, looking like ski jumps, you know, sticking up and look with a platform on the end. I feel like they're dangerous then. They can stand on something and push them up, up into their foot. This is better. Just a little bit high right here. And can you see where the foot's trying to collapse itself? Can you see right there, it's round and it's collapsing down to about there? And that's, can you see that's about the level that the foot wants to be? To bring it back to the right place. So the foot's trying to normalize itself. It's trying to get rid of what it doesn't want. And you can see right there, there's a line almost exactly where it wants to come off. That's pretty much my cut line. Then I just shape it from toe quarter to toe quarter, from the toe quarter around to the heel. And it, it's a fairly even shaped foot now, isn't it? And it's not like I've carved a lot off it. I just en enhanced what was there. I like to take the seed of corn below the, the wall, because that's where you get corns. And that's where the wing of the coffin bone is closest to the surface. So I'm going to put the same type of material, but I'm going to put an inverted bar so it's fitted the same, but it doesn't have the frog support. This foot isn't as bad as the other one. What I, and what I'd look at is, I put a heart bar on that one, but the other foot improves to this one, and then I might put a heart bar on both of them. But if I could get that foot to be as good as this foot, I've done good. And then if I can improve them further, that would be great. Just the inverted bar shoe, so the heels fit the same way. Okay, I want the heels to fit the same way. Because I, I, I don't, because that's the problem with an egg bar. It sticks back right in the middle between the heels, and that's where they come and take them halfway. If you just break, if you look at the shape of the bulbs, you'll see my shoe basically follows the shape of the coronary band, and you'll find you'll avoid more, lo you know, lost shoes. Toe bend, forge the heel, scarf it, bend the branch, nail hole it. So that'd be the same amount as if it was just a normal sh open shoe.
Bear, tap it together, tap it together. Oh, come on, you guys were better off when you had a king. One over the corner, and one over the edge. But I still got to set it. set the shoe back probably about three sixteenths of an inch okay because the toes out forward so I'm just gonna bring it back maybe an eighth three sixteenths but it's not get on and burn it down it's pull it back don't push down that's where you burn into the sole that's where you end up with lame horses you know, and you look at him he did he accepted all that frog pressure with no problem because it's a nice here's the kicker it's a nice flat frog pressure not a pinpoint. Yep, I have. So that every that's why I, I've not had to reshape it. Is it all worked ready? You know, I'm automatically going to those guidelines. This time. What I want is I want my two nail, toenails the same height. Let's hope I can get them. Oh, that's a bit high. Now I want the two heel nails just a bit lower, about one third of the way up the wall. And then this nail in between. No, I want them in between. So the heel nail, the toenail's higher than the heel nail, and the one other one lines up in between the middle of the two. The heel nail should be about halfway up the f <laughs> one third of the way up the foot. Sorry, not half, one third of the way up the foot. Yeah, and it's not. It's also normal foot gets is higher at the toe and lower at the heel. I think I need to bring that one toenail down a bit. Wonderful. I need to do that first time. Well, yeah. 
You know, I'll, I'll say that. You know, for me, when I when I modified machine mids, I didn't feel like I had to charge for clips and I charge for everything. You know, that was part of my normal process. Unless I got into having to make something or make a bar shoe, then it it wasn't an extra. Shoe modification was just included in my price. Um, and it takes some effort to do it, you know, I mean, it, in the beginning it slows you down and all that. But I think it's worth doing. I do. And I, I do believe the farrier industry is going to get more and more competitive. I think you're seeing it now. There's more and more people out there that can pull a clip. There's more and more people out there that can buy shoes, you know, and do a good job. So if you want to charge more, you're going to have to give a diff different service, an extra service. You know, I mean, um, why am I going to pay you more otherwise? What's extremely important is your tongue, your, your, your tongues fit the material. If you don't have your tongue set correctly, where the tongue, the tongue faces are parallel, then your shoes are just going to spin in, the, in them, okay? And if you notice, when I'm working, I've got a lot of control with my tongues. It's the tongues that make the job. That's just a persuader, the hammer, you know? It's my tongue hand that's doing all the work. It's like with fullering. If I'm fullering, that's just the persuader. This is doing all the work, my left hand. You know, and it, it, this just either hits it harder, hits it less. That's where all the work and accuracy comes from, and that's why your tongs need to be really set well. And it doesn't matter how many pairs of tongs you buy, you'll always have to reset them, because if you use them, they get hot, they're gonna need resetting at some point. Exactly the same as you, you don't buy a hoof knife and expect it to stay sharp forever. It's like with your fullers and your stamps and your pritchels. You will have to fix them. So you can't hit something into hot steel and hope it's never gonna get blunt. You gotta to learn to do tool maintenance. So it's the same thing, you know, it's just like sh sharpening your shoeing knife. Sharpening pritchels should be just another thing you do at the end of the day. And when I, when I cut the inside edge out, I visualize that line. There's the angle of my fuller and I'm visualizing where it goes in to where it's going to come out. And if I put it in too far, I'm going to end up cutting the bearing surface, aren't I? So I've got to really think about where I'm going to place it to where it's going to exit. So it's not an accident that where, you know, the shape of the concave. It's a deliberate decision. And uh, a lot of people don't think, you know, they just draw a line, you know, or go around and make a line. Uh -uh. It's looking at that line and where it's exiting, at what angle. If you want this to exit sooner, you've got to tip it over a bit more. Or if you want it to go deeper, you're going to push it in. But all of it is with a, a conscious decision. <laughs> so about an eighth of an inch in I'm going, and you can... Can you see there? Can you see how where it's going to come out now? It's going to come out right there at the bottom edge. I, I can visualize it coming out at that angle. Yeah, see there? I'm trying to do it slowly for you. I have a hard time with slow. Yeah, a piece of aluminum plate, so you don't damage the tool. The aluminum softer than the fuller. But you know, I'm, I'm pretty careful, and I, I haven't done much damage, it, damage to it there. If you look, now I've just dulled the edge. Oh yeah. So, and that was going right to the steel. And now I want to thicken up the inside edge, so I just work the edge. So it's not sharp. And there you are, you can see I've got a pretty nice concave there that doesn't need a lot of grinding. And you could do this all the way around. 
If you had a horse that's not breaking over very easily and you roll the outside of the toe, what would happen if you cut the inside of the toe as well? You're going to decrease the amount of surface area, so it's going to sink in easier, aren't you? That's where you get some of these European shoes like the Equilibrium. Okay, they decrease, you know, you can have more surface area area and less surface area. And so what I could do is I could roll the toe with this and cut the inside and that would really make the toe sink into the surface more than just a, a flat shoe. Take to cut that out. A minute? Yeah. You know, I mean, you're not talking 10 minutes. Yeah. So that's why I can say I can give it away as part, you know, as part of a, a shoe-in service. Making you sound better than the next guy. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to pull this heel down. And I, I, that's what I do. I pull the inside of the heel down. And look how much more width I've got out of that to cover a heel that curls in. And then I can... If you want, you can change the shape of the end of it like this. And we'll blunt the toe a little bit. I don't like a square toe, but I don't mind a blunt toe. So, not going into the shoe too much, because I don't want to damage those nail holes. I paid for the nail holes, so I don't want to have to re-punch them, do I? So I'm very careful, and look, I've gone in and I haven't damaged the nail holes at all. Same again. See there, I've got those, the start of the clips already done. All I've got to do is flatten out the base of the clip. And from there, just go up the middle. Flatten out the base, up the middle. 